Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Stylosa, and in this video, what we're going to do, well, to begin with, we're going to watch two Torbs, like, kill each other, because why not? Uh, but what we're going to do in this video is break down how the pros have been playing Echo and work out how we should be playing Echo and basically pick up some pro tips and guides from these games. Now, there was a friendly match which happened. Um, this was an Overwatch League game because, of course, Overwatch League is effectively cancelled at the moment. But we've got an Echo show match where we can see Valiant and Gladiators and Shock and Soul Dynasty played against each other. So let's see what we can learn from all of this stuff. Now, the first thing I want to focus on here is Jeru turns into Reinhardt in a grab. So he is not using this offensively. He used that ultimate defensively to try and keep his team alive in the grab. That is a beautiful thing to do because typically we've just been seeing a lot of grab the main tank, run in and just do loads of damage. Hell, that's how I've been playing her on the PTR. It's how I played her back at Blizzard because people just don't know how to deal with it. But this here is a beautiful clip. So Jeru again comes in and picks the Ana. Massive grenade. Nano boost goes in. He gets a sleep in. This is so much value. This is incredible value. Certain heroes like Ana and like Batiste have got incredible standard abilities. Like you can win a fight with a grenade. It goes in, the enemy team can't heal. Then you just win that fight. It is so powerful. So sometimes it actually makes sense to grab the Annas or the Batiste. So this is what we're seeing a lot of though. Reinhardt being used in the air. So Drew comes down from the sky almost like some sort of insane aerial airborne division of Reinhardt charging. I don't know. Turns into Reinhardt in the air, hits the ground, instantly charges. Now, Packing on the Gladiators team. He's actually the... Uh, on Valiant's team, sorry. Uh, he's uh, the coach, basically, for the team. But he was playing in this. Um, he was put to sleep, so he couldn't stop that. But that aerial use of the ultimate seems to be how you get around being instantly crowd controlled. Because you have to realize, guys, you are very vulnerable when you clone yourself into a tank or transform into a tank. Tanks are big targets. They can be put to sleep. They can be frozen. They can be hit with, like, earth shatters. There's a lot of stuff going on. So watch this here. Profit in the air. He's flying around the back. Does like a little bit of damage, but Super doesn't really know where he is. And he manages to charge Super from behind. Again, this is a very strong tactic. But one of the things we've been seeing a lot in these games is the pro tank players, or, and this will apply to anybody at any level of the game. If you are a Reinhardt player, you know how to block Earth Shatters. A DPS player turning into Reinhardt, and then they almost certainly just try and insta shatter you. You can block it really easy and just get rid of them and take them out of the fight. Either you charge them, maybe use your own shatter on them. There's a lot of options. And what we get to see in this um, friendly match is there is a lot of examples. I mean, I'm not going to show the whole thing in this video because it was like over an hour long. I mean, I'll link to it in the video description if you guys want to check it out. But there was a lot of examples where the... And this is actually unlucky from Prophet. <laughs> he's like, oh no, oh please no. I mean, he's dead there. He literally can't survive. He's just, he's just dead. Because it isn't like Mercy. It's not like he can lock onto a target and boost up. But like, look at the damage here. Look at that. Sticky Bombs went onto Mercy, destroyed her. Rascal does massive damage there with a primary fire as well into the Ana. It's just incredible. It's, it's totally ridiculous burst damage. And we're going to see some mad burst damage in a second from Sinatra. Um, and we'll focus a little bit on Sinatra, I think, for the remainder of this video. However, it must be said, right? This ultimate is mega powerful. But it's not as powerful, I think, as we first kind of thought it was. Because when you're playing on PTR against people of all kinds of different ranks, when I was playing in the test environment at Blizzard, in the same sort of situation, it's not really a very good chance to test the hero in an actual match. Like, we can only do that when we get into competitive. I mean, look at that there. That damage is incredible. So these sticky bombs do five damage on impact and 30 damage when they detonate, and there's six of them. So that's over 200 damage, and... Uh, you're dead if you've got 200 damage as a, as a hero. Or it is, it is 200 damage. Basically, it kills 200 damage HP heroes, which is ridiculous. And also, it's got a little bit of AoE component to it, which, again, is super powerful. So what we're seeing so far, just to recap, is, yes, cloning main tanks is powerful, but you have to be aware that you will be put under crowd control if you just clone the front line and walk in. It's not clever. Cloning as you're in the sky and dropping down is the sort of most viable tactic for that. But again, you still are kind of vulnerable. We will see, we kind of did see Halt be used a little bit there, but we will see Halt um, get used in future in combination with Sticky Bombs because it's very much like Roadhog when he goes for a hook. The Halt goes out. Everyone knows to fire at the Halt, right? Pharaoh players do this. You know, basically every player should do this. But when you see Halt come out, if you fire your Sticky Bombs into it and they all attach to a target, that's massive damage, right? And you're going to do loads and loads and loads of damage with Echo just looking for that. It's such a basic thing, but it's a nice little combo. You see there, sticky bombs are applied. They're dead. You, you literally cannot survive 
if the majority of the sticky bombs hit you and then the echo goes through doing extra damage. So Sinatra here has actually converted himself into Roadhog, which hasn't really done anything. I kept him alive, I guess, but actually there, I, I say it didn't do anything. It did. It brought that hook out, which they wouldn't have expected. You just don't expect it. Like The, the, the key thing to realize with this hero's ultimate is when an ulti is used, for the last four years of Overwatch, you don't expect to see that ultimate again. But you can just see the ultimate again. It's like nano boost, right? Your team could nano someone, but then you could turn into the enemy Anna and then nano someone again. So you've got two nanos. And that is like unheard of in Overwatch. And it's it's going to throw the game. I don't want to say throw it into disrepute, but it's going to make the game very weird for casters. It's going to make the, the game like very weird to sort of predict what's going to happen until we see some form of potential echo meta developing. So yeah, you see a lot of tanks getting cloned, right? Roadhog seems to be a fairly okay target to clone. Um, Arissa, I, I think she's probably not the strongest because, well, Arissa's barrier isn't the best. Yeah, you will get Supercharger, which is a really good ultimate, but I think there are other tanks that just give you more impact probably than the Arissa. Um, you have to be very aware of crowd control. Using the whole flying up into the air, converting into a tank and dropping down seems to be the way we're seeing the professionals do it. I mean, like I said, disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. These are very much friendly matches, so they're not really taking... Well, they are taking it seriously, and they're, they're playing better than we could ever play, but they are almost playing this like it's a... I don't know, like, like they're playing in competitive. I don't know how to explain it. They're not playing this as a hardcore scrim. This isn't like super hardcore comms they've practiced and they've trained. They've just gone, hey, let's use Echo and see what happens. In a way, we get to see how the pros work out how to play the hero, which is what makes this super cool and what makes these videos, honestly, mega invaluable when it comes to trying to work out how to play new heroes because we won't, like these guys can work out stuff that would take us weeks to work out and they can do it in like a few hours. So we take this and we learn from it and that's fine. So yeah, I think Echo is mega strong, right? She is really strong. Is she massively OP? Uh, she probably needs a lot of tuning. Her ultimate is really good. Like we're seeing here, the, the I don't even know what to call this. It's not pharmacy, obviously, because oh, you're not a pharaoh. I mean, what, what is it? Like Echo, Mercy, Mercy Echo, Murph, Murph, Echo, Murph, Echo. This is terrible. But Mercy works really well with this. So you see Mercy kind of come back if Echo gets used a lot. And there's all these kind of like little cool interactions. Now, the beam is probably something something we should potentially focus on. Now, this is a range of 20 meters. And you'll notice that one of the nice little combos these guys have been using, and again, if you guys go back and watch the entire VOD, and I implore you to do that if you've got nothing better to do with your time, because it will give you like a really good oversight, especially if you watch this video and then go into that uh, the actual full video. You might get a little bit better uh, sort of appreciation for what's going on. But the beam has got a 20 meter range. And so what that means is you are doing 50 DPS normally to targets that are above 50% HP. When they drop below 50, you then do 200 DPS at 20 meters. Now consider that Zarya's beam is 15 meter range. That is a lot of range, right? That is a lot of range. This clip here, or this part of uh, the start of this round, Sinatra gets killed by Bedosin pretty much straight away at the start of the game. She is very vulnerable, Echo. When she's in the air, she's very vulnerable to hit scan fire. Like the Ash, uh, not the Ash, sorry, the uh, Anna of Bedosin there is firing at range, clips does a bit of damage, takes her out. Obviously, she took, a, I think she took a bit of damage as well from other sources, but. She is vulnerable when she's flying around in the sky. You think about Widowmaker players. In fact, KSP um, for LA Valiant. I don't think I've uh, edited it into this clip, but KSP just annihilated the enemy team. We picked Widow and annihilated them. Echo was dead. Echo could not play. Every time she went into the air, she was instantly dead. And that's what these pro players are contesting with. And the big sort of ultimate question to those guys is, is it worth playing Echo when they could play other heroes? Like, is it worth playing Echo to try and clone an enemy tracer, for example, right? Is it worth playing Echo when you could just play Soldier? I don't know, or play Pharah or play Widow. This is the big question. And I think we're going to have to wait into, and kind of see until like a meta develops around Echo. So watch this, right? This is incredible, this. So Sinatra, obviously a really good tracer player. He's got one pulse bomb. Missed the pulse bomb. It doesn't matter. He goes in. He's about to get another pulse bomb. I mean, look at that. Incredible reaction. And he's going to get another pulse bomb, but he doesn't get to use it because the match finishes. That there is the question for the pros, right? Is it worth roll, like running Echo to just get that superpower of like a mental tracer player or that instant earth shatter or an instant grab? Or is that going to be powerful enough? Now, on paper, yeah, this just looks crazy, right? But the more I watch through these games, it becomes more apparent that Echo isn't just winning the matches outright. She isn't just this 
over the top, like ridiculously powerful hero that just wins. She can be outplayed. She can be outmaneuvered. And those periods of downtime when she's not using her ultimate, the question becomes, is she effective? And I think she probably is at the moment. Will she remain effective? Will Blizzard nerf her? Do they think she needs nerf? And we've already seen nerfs come through to the way duplicate is used. You can't duplicate through a barrier now, for example, which I think is totally fine. All right, so let's watch Striker because Striker's about to get heavily pressured on the point. And he's going to use his ultimate to transform into a Reinhardt. So he's waiting, he's waiting. He's going forward. There we go. He almost died, but it doesn't matter because he gets off his ulti. Now, in typical DPS player fashion, he just goes in swinging his hammer. Well, look at what happened to him. He actually just got completely annihilated, put down on the ground by the enemy of Shatter. So he didn't really do anything, and then he dies. So actually, all that happened there is he sort of fed his ultimate to the enemy team and died. And the enemy team are actually starting to take control of the point now. And this is, this is another thing, right? That is not an effective use, but it seems to be like the emergency reaction a lot of players do when they are playing this hero. And we're seeing it off pro players where like, oh my God, you know, I'm just going to grab a tank. You've got to think DPS players are not tank players. They don't. It's very rare you get players that know how to play like all of the heroes at the level they play their main role at, right? So if you were like really good at support, you'd probably be okay as a tank, but you're not going to be able to outplay tanks at that level. Right? Unless you, you do play a tank at the same level. But you guys get what I'm saying, right? And when we look at the pros and the way they're playing, it's beautiful. So Architect here goes in with Genji Blade. And I think this is something to be um, aware of. Now, Architect is not playing Echo. He's just playing Genji. Genji is mega powerful when he whips his blade out, right? Genji Blade is a, is a very powerful ultimate anyway. Genji's very difficult, isn't he, to put to sleep? Or to crowd control when he whips the ultimate out. What isn't very difficult to crowd control and put to sleep when... Well, when you want to do it. Well, a tank, right? So if you're Echo and you grab a tank, a big target, I mean, I've made the point a few times in this video, but it has to be made again. Tanks make sense initially because it's so easy to get their ultimate. I mean, this is nice position off Striker. Terrible use of the bombs, but nice position. And he's sort of sitting on the high ground, spamming away. Actually, the enemy uh, Echo has to pressure him to get rid of him off the high ground, which is good play by, by that player. But tanks are easy to crowd control. So... I think, I think what we're going to see is this move away from, oh, just clone a tank, just clone a main tank and it'll win, to maybe clone an Ana, because Ana is actually really powerful. Maybe let's clone another Batiste, because we've got Immortality Field. Maybe let's just grab a McCree, because I want to get a Deadeye really quick. And I think this is where it all comes into being very situational. This ultimate is very complicated. It's a super complex ultimate. And I know from talking to Jeff Goodman that this is possibly one of the most complicated things actually in Overwatch. It's also one of the most buggy things in Overwatch. So I'm, I'm no doubt there'll be issues with it. You guys might have seen various clips out there where if you clone a target, so if I clone the enemy Reinhardt and then he dies, that Reinhardt can't change his player until I'm finished being Reinhardt. So he has to stay as Reinhardt for 15 seconds, which means he can't change in the spawn. And now, as far as I'm aware, that's a technical limitation. Okay, let's take a look at Striker here. So, Striker's going in. Grav's pretty good. He doesn't really need to use his ultimate at this point. He can save it for the next engagement and everything will be totally fine. Echo has got a lot of mobility. Now, this again was nerfed on the PTR because you could do the super jump, which was you just activated the flight mode and then held spacebar down on your jump key and then disengaged flight pretty much straight away. So, that initial burst, you just carried on like, and you rapidly moved across the map. You can't do that anymore, which, yes, that was probably to be expected because it was kind of like Genji ledge dashing and that kind of mad tech. Um, but she's still very mobile. All right, so Striker has picked Reinhardt up on the high ground. It's like, what's he doing? Like, what is he doing? Like, this is not, like, this is bad, right? And we're going to see a lot of this, right? That has actually just wasted his ultimate because think about what he could have turned into there on the enemy team. Well, I mean, they've got an Ana. He could have grabbed the Ana. You could have even grabbed the Brick, maybe, if they pushed heavy, or even the, the Zarya. Like, you imagine if he grabbed the Zarya from the high ground, charged up a grab and fired it down, that'd be sick. Or he waits for them to push onto the point, then he turns into the Reinhardt, then he drops down. So there's all these little nuances to the way this ultimate can be used effectively. Now, we've got Prophet here just killing everybody on McCree, because obviously he got bored and was like, you know what, I'm just going to kill everyone. <laughs> Which is fair enough. It's Prophet. He, he, he can do this. I actually know Prophet quite well. He's a beautiful player. And it's a shame he doesn't play for Spitfire anymore. Yeah. But this is the other problem as well. The vulnerability to hit scan for Echo is, is there and it is extreme. You can't be out in the open. It's like Farah. But I'm going to be real. Farah, I think, might be a little bit easier to avoid damage in air. Uh, like Not in air to air combat, but when she's out in the air because she can use a concussion. Blast to move herself around. She can drop down. She can fly again. Whereas Echo, when you initiate the flight, you kind of... 
if you're going to get pressure applied to you, it is a bit more difficult to rapidly reposition yourself. Yeah, sure, you can just drop back out of the sky. You know, you can sort of plead for Zarya to give you a bubble or whatever. But she is very vulnerable in that state. So we're going to see a lot of hit scan being used against her. Now, from my own sort of testing with hit scan, it seems like Soldier is a really good counter to this. Heroes like Ash surprisingly weren't as good, I don't think, as Soldier. This just could come down to my personal preference as a player. Obviously, Widowmaker is very good. If you start landing shots on the Echo, she's just going to get absolutely bodied, and there's not really anything she can do about that. All right, then. So these guys are about to push for the final attack of this phase, and we're on board with Striker. So the question is, what is Striker going to do? What is Striker's play here? What ultimate or what hero is he going to grab? Does he go too early? Does he go too late? Well, let's wait and see. So he's grabbed Reinhardt. And uh, yeah, they win. <laughs> so there you go, right? Echo comes down, turns into him, but it doesn't really matter. Because, well, actually, he's going to get... I was going to say D-Mech. He's going to get D-Cloned. I don't even know how to say it. Oh, there you go. There's a good example. So Smurf blocked the Earth Shatter there. He just blocked it. It was like, no, go away. I'm a tank player. So I'm going to block your Shatter. You'll see a lot of that, right? And in fact, I think what will happen is if I'm a Reinhardt player and I'm coming up against enemy Echoes that are turning into Reinhardt, it's almost like a... It's, it's like a... It's an easy win for me because you know you're going against somebody who is not a tank player most of the time. So you can kind of easily outplay them and easily sort of work around what they're doing. I, I just think this this hero is so cool to play. But I think the guiding principles right now are, yes, she's great at long range spam. When you're going in and you think about your ability combos, if you use your bombs, right? So you fire your sticky bombs into someone. What you're looking to do straight away is initiate the beam and then just start lasering them down. Because as soon as the bombs detonate, that's probably going to take them under 50% HP and then you smash them with damage. This is mega powerful against tanks as well. And I think there is some, I suppose, validity to this statement of sometimes Echo is really good if you don't even take her in the air. If you leave Echo in the team and she's behind her Reinhardt barrier and she's pushing forward, she's firing out these sticky bombs, she's using a laser, she's using the primary fire. That is a surprising amount of damage, and that can rip shields down. It can rip tanks down. Remember, she's got 20 meter range on this laser. So it isn't always about being flying in the sky, doing all of that stuff, because you might be super exposed if you keep doing that. And that, to me, is really cool. So here, look, look, look at Architect, right? He's in the air, he's spamming around. He's got a Mercy, trying to spam the other Echo. It's very hard to land primary fire shots, unless you're Architect. Oh, that's a turret. I'll let him. I was going to say, unless you're Architect, then you can just kill people with it, apparently. But that was a Torb turret, so whatever. Torb turret is probably okay against her as well, to be honest. Although, she can fire the sticky bombs onto it and get rid of the turret and primary fire and all that stuff. She's a dive hero as well. This is something that needs to be said. When you use her in a dive comp, which we're seeing being played here, she can go in and she can supplement the dive. I mean, look at the Winston going in. She can easily get in. She can easily reposition. She can easily join in that attack. She's got extra damage. So what we're going to see here is a use of the beam in a, in a very good sort of way, but unluckily gets killed. But the damage was already done to the tank there, which was actually kind of considerable damage, which then results in Arissa being killed. So she's just, she is just a really, she's a really fun hero to play, but she's very complicated. It's very difficult to sort of make guide videos, I, I guess, for, for this hero, which I know, yeah, okay, whatever style. You're calling this a guide video. This is us trying to learn from the pros, learn tips, learn like guidance from the pros, how they play. But she's so situational. It isn't as simple as like to use the Genji example again. Genji just farms, farms, farms. It's fine. Genji might take the odd 1v1 in the back line, whatever. But all Genji does when he gets his blade is he dashes up in the sky, asks for a nano if he's got the Ana, and then goes into the back line and just tries to kill the supports. That's the play, right? It's very simple. With Echo, there's about 10,000 different ways you can use this. I mean, look at this. The use of this ultimate here, the, the, the use of grabbing the Winston, but he gets put to sleep. But the use of grabbing the Winston there just to sort of cause a load of delay to like knock people around off the point. That's another viable option. Grabbing a main tank in a grab. That's a viable option. Grabbing a main tank in the sky above the enemy team and charging the enemy main tank. That's a viable option. Grabbing an Ana and then using the, the, the grenade as an initiation. That's another option. Grabbing a Batiste and using the immortality field. That's an option. Grabbing a Tracer and getting loads of pulse bombs. That's an option. You see what I'm saying, guys? There's so much grabbing a McCree and going around the enemy team and dead-eyeing them from behind. That's another option. I mean, it depends what the enemy team have got, right? As we watch through this last attack here, just look at the enemy team. So look at... Um, we're on board with, with Shock here, but look at Dynasty. Look at the, the players they've got. What can Architect actually turn into here? Well, Diva Bomb, okay, that might be okay. Gestures Arissa. Uh, it, it kills me as well to see Gesture on Soul Dynasty. Oh, my days. And Profit as well. 
Are you going to go for the Orisa? I don't know. Probably not. The Anna? Yeah, I think there's value there. So here, I'd be looking at this thinking, well, maybe I'll go for the Anna. But what about if we have two Tracers, which they could have, right? This, it's like, it's so situationally dependent. It is crazy. But the moment-to-moment -moment play of this hero very much is you're at range, you're spamming. When you see an opportunity, you can push in. You want to use your sticky bombs at close range and immediately start firing the, the laser into them. Primary fire is good. I mean, he did kill Prophet with primary fire. Has taken out the bongo as well with the sticky bombs, which again is obviously super fast for doing that because of just the amount of damage it does. But I mean, look, look, beams, sticky bomb into beams, sticky bomb into beams. That is very much the combo for this hero just for its, its close range DPS. It is incredible. It is actually incredible the amount of damage that pumps out. So Architects here, who is he going to clone? We can, uh, it's gone for Tracer. So we've got double Tracer. But Prophet has just got a double horse bomb. So yeah, he's going to have to do some big stuff with this. It's not going to be possible. I mean, th th that's the power of like just having a Prophet on your team, right? And this again goes back to the whole thing of, is it worth having an Echo? Because it's so, like the thing with, so the thing with Echo, I think, is it just, it's so unpredictable. You don't know what the Echo player is going to do. They have got so many options when their ultimate is available. It isn't as simple as like, okay, they are using a, you know, think of Soldier. If Soldier uses attack visor, what does the D.Va player do? Well, the D.Va player just flies towards Soldier with defense matrix. What does the Reinhardt player do? Moves his barrier towards it and deals with it. But when Echo transforms into a D.Va, which he could transform into a Reinhardt, a Tracer, a like a Brig or an Anna, but this time she's picked D.Va, how do you how do you react to the fact the bomb's going to come in really quick? You have to really like, and that's the that's the value I think with this hero. It just knocks everybody off guard, and it's 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 just so, it's such an incredibly designed hero. Like in terms of balance and whatever, we're going to find out if it's super OP or not. I guess in short order. But from watching the pros player, it doesn't look like she's crazy crazy OP. It looks like she's strong. Don't get me wrong. Her ultimate is a strong ability, and that beautiful little 360 shot <laughs> is glorious to see at the end of this clip. You've got to love it. But she is a strong hero, right? Don't get me wrong, guys. But I just think that um, through watching these videos and trying to decipher the way the pros are playing the hero, you can see that there are very powerful ways of playing her, but then there's a lot of question marks. These players are the best in the world, right? This is shock. They are literally the best in the world against Sol Dynasty. Pretty good players as well. Um, if these guys are using her and getting pretty good value but are still confused, then the average player base is going to be mega confused for a long time to come. All right, guys. I'm in Stylosa, and this is the beautiful Stylosa channel. I almost said Unit Lost. I've said that for so many years, but I changed the name to Stylosa. But it's still Unit Lost. Don't get me wrong. Just the URL is now <laughs> Stylosa. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, remember you can follow me on everything at Stylosa, and I will catch all of you guys on the next video. Remember to stay safe out there, guys, and keep washing your hands. Catch you on the next one. Doodaloo.